Hello guys, here in the session of cadaveric anatomy, we are going to talk about the transverse section of the arm, that is the midway between glenohumeral and the elbow joints, where we can appreciate all the compartments of the arm. So now we can see the cadaveric image very carefully here. This is a beautiful image of the transverse section of the arm. And let us try to look at the orientation of the image given. Here we can appreciate the medial and lateral epicondyles, which are the bony landmarks. Now let me show you the orientation to identify the structures that are seen in this image. Now what you do is just have a look at the humerus, which is shaft, right? And now you can carefully see that the posterior surface of the humerus is flat. And you can very carefully see that the anterior aspect of the humerus is more like convex with a tapering margins, which gives a triangular appearance. So, as a student, you should know that, especially in the anatomy, when you are talking about cross sections of the limbs, any cross section of the limb can be identified by taking bone as a reference. So the bone helps to understand the orientation of the specimen. And we know that this is the cross section which is taken below the midway between glenohumeral joint and the elbow joint to show the compartments of the arm. That is why we are here. So this cross section is just below the midway because the section is below the attachment of the deltoid. Attached to the deltoid tuberosity. And coracobrachialis is on the medial aspect of shaft of the humerus at the level of the delta tuberosity. So absence of these two muscles explains that this section is taken below the midway. So we can clearly demarcate anterior and posterior compartments with the help of intermuscular septa. So here is the medial intermuscular septa. And this is the lateral intermuscular septum. Now we can tell that this is the anterior compartment and what is the posterior compartment. So we can clearly see that anterior and posterior compartments of the arm separated by the intermuscular septa. And you can see the muscle adhering to the shaft of the humerus on the anterior surface and also on the posterior surface as well. So the muscle which is adherent to the anterior surface is brachialis. So the brachialis gets its origin from the lower part of the anterior surface of the shaft of the humerus. This we have studied anyways in the osteology. And now the muscle which is superficial to the brachialis is the biceps brachii. And the biceps muscle has no attachment on the humerus because it gets its origin from scapula and inserts into the radius, which is radial tuberosity. And when we appreciate the posterior compartment, the muscle is bulk. This bulky muscle is formed by the triceps, where we have medial head, lateral head and long head. All the three heads are clearly seen in this picture. And this section is taken at the radial groove or spiral groove which contains radial nerve and profunda brachii vessels which are in close association with the shaft of the humerus. And you can clearly see here and try to identify the radial nerve which lies close to the lateral intermuscular septum. In its further course, radial nerve pierces the lateral intermuscular septum to come forward towards the lateral side of the arm. We can also appreciate a neurovascular bundle on the anteromedial aspect, which contains the median nerve along with the brachial artery and veins. And more medially, we can also appreciate the most important nerve, which is ulnar nerve, which is well demonstrated in this picture, which lies on the most medial aspect that is just behind the intermuscular septum. So all these are the structures what we can appreciate on the cross section of the arm or mid arm 
just below the attachment of the deltoid, which is deltoid tuberosity. 